Welcome to another video. This is another question from the G Advanced um, Examination. And I'd done this video before, but the method I used was so traditional that I got a lot of complaints about it, that why are you doing it the long way? Why don't you do it the short way? I have reevaluated the way I did it the first time. Not that the answer was incorrect, but the method did not highlight what I think I should be highlighting. And that's why I'm redoing this video. There's some very interesting facts about this question and about determinants of a matrix, which I never mentioned in the previous video. So I'm sure you'll be able to learn one or two things as we continue. Let's get into the video. The first thing I want to highlight is a property of determinants, which I think I never talked about. And it is essential to solving this thing, because what we have here is a column, a column, and a column that is a sum of terms. So what I'm going to look at is, consider this, we have 3, 2, 7, minus 1. Is there another way I could write this determinant? Not the matrix. So this does not work for matrices, but it works for determinants all the time. So look, I could rewrite this determinant as the sum of two determinants. Watch this. If I rewrite 3, 7, let's say I keep one column. I write this as 3, 7, okay? And I decide to write this as, instead of 2 and minus 1, I write it as maybe 1 plus 1. And I write this as um, maybe minus 1 plus 0, or I write it as 2 minus 1, or I write it as 3 minus 2. Let's write it as 2 minus 3. So this is written this way. Now what this means is because we're going to need it for this, is that you can actually generate two determinants from this expression by saying this is the same thing as 3, 7. You keep the first part, 1, 2, and then you make another determinant out of this. You're going to keep the same thing, 3, 7, and then this is going to be 1 minus 3. You see, if you compute this determinant, because what we did is just to rewrite this column, you're still going to get the same answer, which means, what's this determinant? This is going to be 6 minus 7. That's minus 1. Plus, this is going to be negative 9 minus 7. What's minus 9 minus 7 minus 16? minus 16. So the sum of these two should be negative 17. To check that, let's find the determinant of this. Minus 1 times 3 is going to be minus 3 minus 14. It looks like it is correct. There is a second property of determinant that is relevant to this problem, and I just want to quickly talk about it. Now, look, you can easily compute this determinant this way by multiplying 6 times 30, you get 180, and 4 times 15, you're going to get 60. 180 minus 60 is 120, so you expect that the determinant will be 120. However, if the numbers are too big, or it is something like this where you don't know the determinant, there's something you could do. You can go this way and go, what is common to, maybe I should go this way, what is common to 15 and 30? It's 15. You can actually pull it out. You can pull out this 15. You see that? It's going to be 6, 4, 1, 2. The numbers have drastically reduced. Your answer is going to be correct. Now, you can also do the same thing to the top. You go, what is common to 6 and 4? It's 2. You could pull out the 2 and change this to 3. And change this to 2. So it's basically factoring. So now you can try to compute the determinant of this. What will be the determinant? It's going to be, now you see this 2 here, this 15 is here. We don't write this way. You multiply both numbers and you're going to get 30. So your answer is actually 30. This is really, let's just circle it. Okay, don't write like that. Just pull the 2 together and it's 30 times this 3, 2, 1, 2. Now what's this determinant? It's 30 times 6 minus 2. What's 6 minus 2? 4. That's times 4. That's 120. Which was the predict predicted 
um, determinant. Now, I just went this way. Sometimes you can go this way. So if we do that, we're going to say what's common to 6 and 15, it's going to be 3, right? So we take out 3 and divide this by 3, you get 2. Here's going to be 5. What's common to this column? It's um, 2. So we're going to have 2 and 15, and this is going to be 2. So you multiply these two together. So what you basically have is 6 times 2, 2, 5, 15. What do you get? This is going to be 30 minus 10. That's 20. What is 20 times 6? 120, which is what we expected to get, right? Sometimes you going this way is not enough. You can also see in this direction that you can take out 5. You can also see in this direction you can take out 2. Let's take out everything that's possible. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be the same thing as I already have. This is 6 times now I'm going to take out 2 in this direction. Let's put 2 here. So this is 1, 1. I'm going to take out 5 in this direction. So that's going to be 5. This is going to be 1. And what's this? Um, 3. So what do you see? This is going to be equal to 2 times 5 times 6. That's going to be 60 times this determinant. was Okay, 1, 1, 1, 3. What's that? That's going to be 60 times 3 minus 1, which is 2, 120. So you can take out as much as possible. Just make sure you are taking them out either horizontally or vertically, row-wise or column-wise. Now we're ready to answer this question. You already see what to take out. So the first thing to do here is to go back to the very first trick I told you about one of the properties. Because you're adding these, you can separate them into two different, and you can do it at once, okay, to save time. But let's separate them first. So what you have here, this is equal to the determinant of x, x squared, and 1, 2x, 4x squared, and 1, and we have um, 3x, 9x squared, and 1. Plus, you do the same thing, x, 2x, 3x, we have x squared, 4x squared, 9x squared, and then we have this column, x cubed, 8x cubed, and 27 x cubed. So this determinant would define, oh, and it's equal to 10. Hey, equals 10. <sighs> I snuck in a 10 there. Okay, now this is what we have. We're going to now, because what we're looking for, according to the question, is the total number of real x's that make this true. Okay, all the x's that make this true. So what we're going to do is pull out, like I said, okay, we're going to pull out x from here, we're going to pull out x squared from here. And if we pull out x here and x squared here, you're going to have x cubed all together. So we're going to have x cubed, and we're going to have 1, 2, and 3. Here we're going to have 1, 4, and 9, and here we're going to have 1, 1, and 1. Plus, we're going to pull out x here, pull out x squared here, pull out x cubed here. That's going to be x to the sixth. You see that? And then we have skeletons remaining. We have 1, 2, and 3, 1, 4, and 9, and we have 1, 8, and 27. Now, you can do whatever else I said you could do. I have x cubed outside. I am going to subtract this column from the other columns, okay? Once you subtract one column from other columns, it does not change the determinant or a multiple of one column from the others, or add it to them. So if I subtract this from this, I'm going to get 0 here, and I'm going to get 0 here. So the very first one will be 1, 0, 0. Now I'm going to subtract 2 from this and from this. Subtract 2 from here, I get 2. This is 2. So the first column would not change. If I subtract 2 from this, I'm going to get minus 1. This is 3. If I subtract 3 from this, I'm going to get 6. If I subtract 3 from this, I'm going to get minus 2. You see, this makes our life incredibly easy. And here, uh, I said I was going to write this line. So I'm pulling out, or don't worry, I don't want to pull out, but you know that we could pull out 3 and 2, so we have 6. I want to pull it out. Let's do it. So this is going to be plus 6x to the 6th. I should have waited. Let's just write this. 1, 1, 1. This is um, now 1, 2, 4. 1, 2, 4. And this is now 1, 3, 9. 1, 3, 9. 
Okay, one more step, sorry. X cubed into one, zero, zero, two, two, minus one, and three, six, minus two. And here we have six X to the sixth. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'll subtract the first column from the rest so I can get zeros all over there. So I'm gonna have one, zero, zero. Oh, and this is equal to 10. Ah, always equal to 10. Okay, and one, zero, zero, subtract one from this, we're gonna get one, one, three, subtract one, this one stays, this is two, and this is eight, nice. Let's take the determinant. The good thing about, and the point of the whole zeros is to minimize the number of computations, because if you take the determinant along this row, this is the only term that matters because these are zeros, so they won't count. Now, the minor of this one is this little matrix. You see it there? So you, you actually have x cubed, this is 10. You have x cubed times the determinant is just one times this determinant, which is two minus one, six minus two, plus six x to the sixth. This is gonna be just one, three, two, eight, and this is equal to 10. Minus four, minus, what do you have? Minus four plus six is gonna be plus two. So we have x, two x cubed plus, we do the same thing here. This is eight minus six, that's two. So this gives me 12 x to the sixth is equal to 10. Now, this is what we have. The good thing about this is that this is the square of this, so we can treat it as a, as a quadratic in the form of x cubed being our y. So if we factor this, let's move everything together. Oh, I can divide everything by two. I just noticed that. So that this would become six, this would be one, and this will be five. So now, what two numbers will you multiply to get negative 30? but their sum is plus one. Well, it's six and minus five, okay? So I can easily factor this as six x to the sixth plus six x cubed minus five x cubed minus five equals zero. If I factor these two, I'm gonna get six x cubed into x cubed plus one minus, what's common is just five, x cubed plus one, okay? so means I have x cubed plus one and six x cubed minus five. Let's put the answer here. So first one, x cubed plus one equals zero. And remember, I'm looking for real solutions. Now, whenever x cubed is equal to a constant, there is only one real solution. The other two solutions will have to be imaginary. So here, this implies x cubed equals minus one, and then x will be equal to the cube root of minus one. What's the cube root of minus one? Well, it's minus one and some other complex numbers, but this is the only real solution, minus one. So we have x equals minus one. And a similar story applies to when we do six x cubed minus five. Six x cubed, minus five equals zero implies x cubed is equal to five over six, which means that x equals the cube root of five over six. And that's it. I don't know what the cube root of five over six is. So what's the question? Find the total number of x, of real values of x, such that this is true. Well, we got one here, we got one here looks like the total number is two. Where should we write that? Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.